For decades, people have used psychedelic substances like magic mushrooms to alter how they see the world. Now, a new human trial at UC Berkeley aims to find out exactly how they affect the brain. Join me now as a leader of that study and faculty director of the UC Berkeley Center for the Science of Psychedelics, Michael Silver. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, let's start with the science of psilocybin. What does it actually do to the brain? And in this study, how are your patients going to be ingesting it? Well, we know, unfortunately, very little at this point about what psilocybin uh, does in the brain. We understand mm -hmm. it fairly well at a molecular level, mm -hmm. but why psilocybin produces these profound changes in experience and consciousness and perception and how it may be useful uh, as a treatment for mental health disorders, those are also research questions that are still being actively investigated. So how are you picking the subjects of this study? How, how is it going to be conducted? Uh, this is not a study on patient populations. It's so-called healthy normal subjects. Mm -hmm. And so anybody who's interested can go to our website or contact our email address for uh, potential participants. And then there's an elaborate screening procedure to make sure that people in our study are not at risk of having uh, adverse reactions. Uh, but it's open to practically anybody. Now, we know that it does have some benefits, but there are some dangers as well. What's the biggest concern you have about psilocybin specifically? Psilocybin, uh, in terms of toxicity to the body, is mm -hmm. extremely safe, uh, certainly compared to many other uh, substances that we ingest in our society, thinking about alcohol and tobacco, mm -hmm. uh, and also safe compared to many medicines. Uh, the main risks, I would say, are psychological risks, and these are often uh, situations where uh, difficult material arises for people, and mm -hmm. they often depending on the situation, uh, haven't prepared for that. And they're not in an environment where it's safe and they, f they feel protected or they haven't uh, kind of put enough preparation into going into the experience. So there are risks, but I think that they can be managed by the proper intention and, and research. Is the hope that with studies like this and research that you're doing, that something like psilocybin or maybe another psychedelic could one day potentially replace some pharmaceutical drugs used to treat depression, anxiety, PTSD symptoms? Is that kind of the goal here? Um, as scientists, we follow the data, and so whatever the most effective treatment is, is the one that, that should be uh, promoted. Uh, but it's just the case that we have many mental health conditions in our society that are very prevalent, and our treatments are very limited for them, including PTSD and depression and anxiety and substance use disorders. And there's evidence that psychedelic-assisted therapy can be a helpful treatment for some of these disorders. And so that's where the research needs to be at this point for, in terms of public health. And if it proves to be more effective than the treatments we have, then of course we should uh, incorporate those into medical care. So what do you think the biggest misconception is that people have about magic mushrooms, psilocybin, psychedelics? Uh, I think the biggest misconception is that they are much more dangerous People believe that they are much more dangerous than they are. There's a lot of misinformation that dates back to the 1960s mm -hmm. about psychedelic drugs making people jump off of buildings mm -hmm. and stare into the sun and so forth. And uh, we know now what the risks are and the, the importance of set and setting, the, the mindset that people bring into the psychedelic experience and then the setting in which they have that experience are critically important. And if proper care is taken there, then these drugs can be very safe and certainly can be viable medicines. Do you think the stigma of psychedelics is softening a bit? It appears to be. It's mm -hmm. still there for sure, mm -hmm. uh, but there's uh, interesting new groups that have become very much in favor of psychedelics, for example, veterans groups mm -hmm. that uh, are seeing the, the terrible suffering from PTSD in veterans populations and seeing the, the lack of viable treatments. Yeah. Uh, and so they don't necessarily connect with the 1960s and the counterculture and so forth, but they see psychedelics as a, a potential uh, breakthrough for mental health treatment. Yeah, we're going to cover that a little bit later in our show. Michael Silver, th thank you so much for being here. Great information. Anxious to see the results of your study. Thank you. All right, still ahead, we look at how veterans are using psychedelics, like we just mentioned, to help heal trauma and the latest push here in California to make some types of therapy legal.
This afternoon, we're looking at the impact of psychedelics on the brain. And here in California, there's a new push to allow the legal use of certain psychedelics as therapy for veterans and first responders, many of whom deal with mental health challenges. The National Center for Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder says PTSD is slightly more common among veterans than civilians. At some point in their life, 7% of veterans will have PTSD. For female veterans, that number jumps to 13%. And according to the VA, the suicide rate among veterans is more than twice as high as non-veteran adults. And while some vets find relief in prescribed medications, others are turning to psychedelics on their journeys towards healing. CBS News contributor Lisa Ling met with several of them, including Herb Daniels. He spent 14 years as a Green Beret and nearly 14 years in active combat. How dark did it get for you? The darkness was pretty profound. What kinds of medications were you prescribed? A lot of medications, taking them in the morning, through the day, in the evenings, pills to help me sleep at night. Did any of the medications work? I have to say no. Daniel spent four years in active combat, and he says it was after he retired from military service that the darkness started to consume him. He planned to take his own life twice. Then he found out about an organization funding grants for former special forces to leave the country for treatment not legal here in the U.S. It's called VETS, Veterans Exploring Treatment Solutions. Marcus and Amber Capone founded it after Marcus retired from multiple combat deployments as a Navy SEAL with PTSD and a traumatic brain injury. Why psychedelics? It gets the job done. I mean, you know, flat out, traditional approaches are very difficult to solve those problems. It really, for me, came down to a point of complete desperation to save Marcus. It felt like we could lose him to suicide. Amber found out about a retreat in Mexico that uses psychedelics to treat PTSD. So in 2017, Marcus went to Mexico where he was given a hallucinogenic plant mixture from Africa and he smoked SMEO DMT. That's when he says everything changed. It's like it just reset everything in a few hours. All the stress, anxiety, it just went away, it flew away, it fell right off my shoulders. 5-MeO-DMT is reputedly like the most powerful psychedelic. I mean, it's not the kind of thing that you would just do on a whim. No, you know, you get to a place where it's, it's bliss and it's godlike, but it's not fun. You should always be in the care of someone who's a professional. Now, after Marcus's experience, the couple dedicated themselves to helping former special forces. They say the veterans who are funded are given the money to pay for the retreat and given educational resources and support before and after they leave the U.S. Now, there are opponents like the California Family Council who worry that making psychedelics widely available could have devastating consequences if they fall into the wrong hands. Seizures, heart issues, anxiety, hallucinations. I mean, psychedelics actually, part of what it does is it makes you lose touch with reality. Now, sometimes people have good reactions with that, but there's a lot of people who have terrible reactions. They think they can fly. They don't know where they are. They have violent uh, reactions to this. At the state capitol, lawmakers just introduced a new bipartisan bill to allow military veterans and first responders to access certain psychedelics like psilocybin for mental health treatment. It's called the Heal Our Heroes Act. And joining me live now is one of the co-authors of that bill, State Senator Josh Becker. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, there's been many similar bills to come through and none of them have, have passed yet. What makes this one different? I think one thing, uh, and people might be surprised at this, as you mentioned, this is a bipartisan effort. I'm doing this with the Senate Republican minority leader, uh, Brian Jones. We are working together uh, on this piece of legislation. And, uh, and that's because it's a very targeted approach. It's a very limited approach. It's pilots in three counties. And as you mentioned, specifically uh, focused on veterans 
and first responders. And we're going to get a lot of valuable research and intel out of this, um, but also hopefully help a lot of people, but in a supervised setting, supervised by professionals, by health professionals. What about the concerns, though, over potential misuse of psychedelics? Well, again, this is very limited. So this is going to be five locations in each of those initial three counties, uh, only um, and very limited folks can administer it in terms of MDs, psychiatrists, and it can, and again, it'll be a supervised health setting. So I think that's why maybe people feel better about this effort. Why do you think this is so important now in terms of our veterans? Well, I think it's for the, the story you heard and the stories that I've heard now over the last four years since I've been here. I've heard veterans uh, like Jesse Gould coming here, who was deployed three times as an Army Ranger to Afghanistan. Juliana Mercer uh, did was over five years in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, and then she spent five years working with the Wounded Warrior Battalion in San Diego. Uh, we've heard Angela Graham, 35 years as emergency uh, services uh, professional. Um, uh, some folks who have been involved in in the New York effort, uh, Joe McKay, um, around uh, uh, veterans who had been exposed to burn piles. Um, so these, I've just heard these people coming, um, excuse me, you know, the people coming now year after year uh, testifying, and and you hear this, you say, we want to do something. There's, and as you said, there was a lot of stigma around this. Um, I think a, a lot of probably maybe just misperceptions. And so um, we realized this is an opportunity here to really help uh, these veterans and advance our knowledge here. We should grab it. We need to do something here in California. All right. So what are the next steps with this bill? Well, it's going to be uh, heard in the Assembly Health Committee, um, and that's something that will be happening in the next several weeks. Um, and then we have to pass the Assembly. we got to get it through and, and through the Senate. So it's a bit of a rush time frame. We really have only till the end of August. But I think we have a lot of momentum because of stories like, like the, that you're profiling here today. All right, State Senator Josh Becker, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, some veterans are turning to the ocean to find healing from their trauma. How surf therapy is easing their minds. This afternoon, we're talking about ways veterans are working through mental health challenges. While some turn to medication or other substances, others are finding comfort by catching waves. There's a group surf therapy for veterans off the coast of Santa Cruz called Operation Surf. It was all started by Van Carraza more than two decades ago to help deal with his own trauma. Among the group is 28-year-old Zach Tidwell. He lost his sight from a bullet after trying to take his own life when he left the Marines. He says surfing means everything to him. My lens widens. It's, it's, it's kind of surreal. It's about building trust. Therefore, you can accomplish things that you never thought you could ever do. What we do at Operation Surf is not just to build connection with the ocean. It's actually to build connection with others. Research shows spending time in the ocean can help reduce PTSD symptoms from nearly 40%. More than 2,000 veterans have participated so far in Operation Surf. And service dogs can also help military members and veterans with PTSD. A JAMA Network open study finds partnership with a trained psychiatric service dog reduces the severity of PTSD, depression, and anxiety after three months compared with usual care alone. Now, for veterans who are in crisis or their loved ones, there is a number you can call for support. It's 988, and then you press 1. That's available 24-7, and it's always confidential. We'll be right back. And thank you so much for joining us for today's important conversation about the use of psychedelics as therapy and their impact on the human brain. We'd love to hear what you think. Do you believe in their healing powers or do you think they're just too risky? Post your thoughts online using the hashtag KPIX. The CBS Evening News is next on KPIX and local news continues on our streaming service, CBS News Bay Area. I'll see you at five. To view more content like this, we've selected some videos we think you'll enjoy. And please make sure to like and click the link in the bottom left corner to subscribe.